How's it going fellow traders? It's Magic Trader here and this is the CFTC report for May 15th, 2018. So here's a snapshot of the positions that the banks were holding as of May 15th. And so let's take a look at gold and see what we can see here. Okay, so on gold, we had price consolidating here on the weekly chart. And as price was consolidating, we can see that the institutions increased their longs just by a tad. But what we should really be focusing our attention on is this here. If you take a look, you can see that the institutions increased their shorts from 91,000 short to 109,000, thus becoming more aggressive with their shorts. And why is that? Well, we can see why that is, because we eventually got a drop. And um, I believe that we're actually going to get a further drop down towards this area down here. So I've been waiting for that for quite some time. And now we are starting to see the data supporting the idea of this drop. Uh, but once down here, we're going to have to be careful about taking longs. and. Um, I've gone through that in the uh, Forex Market Outlook video, so you can have a look on that video to see why. But basically, the shorts are being um, supported here by the positions of the banks. This is exactly what I wanted to see. Shorts becoming aggressive, larger than the average size, and longs are less than the average size. So this supports a bigger move to the downside. All right, what do we see with oil? So oil, they're taking off some of their long positions, right? For the last uh, one, two, three, four weeks now, they've been closing off longs. Now I've been saying that they're very heavily aggressive with their long positions and that they would have to start to take profits on those longs, especially with the fact that we are approaching a weekly area of supply that I'm expecting a move from the, the downside from. So we see that right now shorts increased a little bit from 124 to 128, but you could you could tell that basically the short positions are still very cooled off. But there isn't a big increase in shorts taking place right now because right now the institutions are focused on taking profits on those long positions that they're holding. So we're sitting within a weekly supply imbalance right now. So it's a good time to start taking profits. Whether this is going to be the zone that we're going to see a further decline originate from is yet unknown. But I think there's a good chance that that happens. I'm expecting a further move to the upside. But great indication that something is about to happen. All right. The fact that these numbers, these average numbers, are telling us that there's a shift of momentum, it's very, very helpful because we've seen time and time again that every time uh, we see a shift, like in this case, price is heading up and shorts are above average size and longs are below, that tends to mean momentum is about to begin to shift and a move to the down downside is about to begin. All right, what do we see with the US dollar? So longs increase from 26,000 to 28,000, but shorts also increase as well from 26 to 28. So shorts are still aggressive, longs are still cooled off considering previous positions. And this happened as price was pushing downwards from a supply structure here. We can see eventually price just broke up to the upside, but I think I have a very um, keen sense that what's happening here are the institutions are just baiting in longs right up here so that they can fill in their short orders. It's too early to tell now, but we can see shorts are aggressive and they're becoming just a bit more aggressive. What I'd like to see in the following week's report is longs being closed out by just a little bit. They don't have to close them out by a lot and uh, shorts increasing. That's what I would like to see. Right now we're at 50-50, but you could tell that the coloration of the cells are telling us that they are still short bias considering previous positions. All right, so let's take a look at 
the Aussie. So what do we see? We see that the longs have increased from 62,000 to 72,000. But take a look again. Shorts increasing from 79,000 to 95,000, thus becoming even more aggressive. So right now we can tell that shorts are the predominant position being held by the institutions right now. Okay, Even though they only consist of 57% of the overall exposure, and the sentiment is somewhat neutral with a tinge of bearishness. We can tell that based on previous size that this is a big deal for the institutions to be holding this many positions short. Okay, And there's good reason for that because when you take a look at the technicals, you can see that there's a, a chart pattern that's reminiscent of a bigger move to the downside. But whether or not that's going to happen is still unknown. But there's a good indication that that is to come just by looking at the data here. All right, let's take a look at US CAD. So US CAD longs decreased by uh, about 3,000 positions and uh, shorts decreased by about the same amount. Net effect is that long exposure increases by one point. But if you take a look here, net positions slightly decline. Okay, so what's going on here? We're trapped in the middle of two trend lines, and there's going to be a breakout eventually. I was wanting a bigger push to the downside here, but the way that this week, last week, has closed, it looks like that may not happen. Price just may, may stall out here before a push to the upside. What we can see is that overall sentiment is bullish with a tinge of neutrality, which means, you know, get ready to move price to the upside, but right now let's just sit on the sidelines and wait. So very clear indication here with the data that we should not be making a move, but we should be eventually expecting a break to the upside. All right, so let's take a look at the U.S. Swiss franc. What do we see? Longs increasing from 58,000 to 62,000. And shorts not really moving. Okay, so longs becoming more aggressive. And that happens as price was reaching the tested weekly area of supply. So long exposures, 71%. And we can tell by the coloration of the cells that the sentiment is bullish just wanting a some sort of a retracement down so that we can get in long I believe that's going to happen right now the data is not telling us that this drop is about to come but we can see that they are definitely bullish this pair just like we are and um, so I'm waiting for those signs and I think maybe this week or the the next couple weeks we'll start to see a decline and I'd love for next week's report to show us that shorts are beginning to increase. Maybe take off a little bit of those longs for profits up here. Take off some longs, increase some shorts, and then eventually see the bigger move to the upside. Euro US dollar. So 226,000 down to 219,000. They're taking, they're taking profits on long positions and they're also reducing shorts. So taking profits on longs as price was hitting a weekly area of demand. So you can see that they're still very much aggressive with their long positions, right? And I suspect that they don't want to close off all of those long positions down here when they could close them off up here. So I think, and you know, you're taking a look at the short positions, you could tell that they're very much cooled off with their short positions. So if price was indeed going to make a drive all the way down here like this, you would think that they would want to add more of their short positions on, right? And where would they want to add short positions as high as possible? So I'm waiting to see for signs of a move up like this because I do believe that that's what the institutions are eventually going to um, pl play out on the uh, on the charts. They're most likely going to move it up here where they're going to start closing off longs and then adding shorts up here for the drive lower. And this can play out for quite some time until we get a, an actual move bigger move to the to the downside but we'll have to wait to see what the data shows us right now they're still very aggressively long 
but I have an inclination that we're going to see price driving back up and that's just by looking at the data here okay so we'll wait and see what happens with that next is the pound US dollar what do we see so longs were very aggressive but then they took profits on those driving price to the downside we had a weekly uh, demand imbalance here and we can see that shorts increased by about 2k and a decrease by about 1,000 positions as price was consolidating here. So no sign that they're going to drive price to the upside just yet, but longs are still aggressive compared to the shorts. And if we take a look, let's take a look here. Shorts are above average size and longs are below. So that's a good sign for that big momentum shift, right, that we are expecting and we have been expecting since price was up here. So we can see that's already taking place. But again, just like with the euro, longs are aggressive and shorts are cooled off. For price to make a bigger move to the downside, they'd want to shift this more in favor of shorts. So we'll be watching for those signs, but we'll also be watching the technicals so that I can position myself short and profit on the move to the downside. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. US dollar, Japanese yen. So if you take a look here, you can see that shorts are aggressive with an increase from 51 to 64, quite substantial. And if you take a look at the short exposure, it pops up from 47 to 51%, thus becoming somewhat bearish neutral. So. That does support a move to the downside. We are hitting a descending trend line on the weekly chart. And shorts are becoming aggressive. Longs are cooled off. Even though they increased from 57 to 61, the increase wasn't as significant as the shorts. Therefore, short exposure jumps up. And take a look at net positions. They used to be in the positive. Now they are in the negative. So this supports a move to the downside. Okay. Whereas the euro wasn't really showing any real signs and the pound isn't showing any real signs except for the technicals and the indications that I've pointed out to the members of the community. This one is being very clear with the data, giving us a clear indication that a bigger move to the downside or a move to the downside, excuse me, uh, is what is to be expected. Okay, so that's the US dollar Japanese yen. Let's take a look here at the Kiwi dollar. And we can see that longs decreased by about 1K. And take a look at that big increase in shorts from 16,000 to 26,000 positions. Makes sense. That comes as this candle here was being formed. Makes sense because we did get a drive lower down to this area of weekly demand. Expecting a move to the upside from here. And if you take a look at the coloration of the cells, you could see that the institutions have a sentiment, uh, a neutral sentiment on this pair. That position is just a positive 1.9 thousand, so nothing to write home about. Longs are still aggressive, so that supports a push to the upside. But in terms of taking trades, neutral. Stay on the sidelines. Now is not a time to trade this pair. I think there will be good setups to come, but we need for the technicals to present the correct setups first. Once those institutional trade signals are there, then we can pounce on them. But taking a look at the data, we should not be trading this pair right now. All right, so that's pretty much all of the CFTC data covering gold, oil, and the major currency pairs, as, as well as the US dollar. I hope it, it was helpful for you. Hope it will help you in your trading this week. We don't have any significant data coming out this week, so it'll just be a, about watching the charts and seeing whether or not these moves that we have forecasted using this data will play out. All right, guys, be safe out there, and until next time, have a good one.